We're going to take a look at the cochlea, which is what you're looking at right here in the center. And we're going to look mostly at the histology from these two slides up here. So first, it's good to just take a look at the cochlea as we see in the center and just understand what we're looking at because you're used to seeing it intact. And in this picture, though, you see it just cross-sectioned right down the middle. And each one of these things is a section of the cochlea which is spiraling up towards the apex of the cochlea. And so what you're going to be focusing on mostly when looking at the histology is when you're zoomed out, you're going to see this entire structure here. But really, we're going to focus really on what you're seeing in one of these ducts, and specifically the cochlear duct right here. So let's get this picture out of the way. And what we're going to look at specifically is one picture of the organ of Cordy. So just to make sure you know where I'm coming from, it's coming from right here. So we're literally going to blow this up here. <clears throat> going to get rid of that picture. Now we're looking at where all the action is. And this picture is labeled nicely, so I'll set it right next to the real picture of the actual tissue. And you can kind of take a look and try to match it up for yourself. And so what you see here is one of the biggest differences is as you look at this tectorial membrane here, it's not it's attached actually via these outer hair cells in in reality and in a living organism, but upon death these hair cells release and the tectorial membrane as you can see right here is flipped back. So that's one of the biggest differences in the illustrations that you see in your textbook and on the internet is that in reality, uh, or sorry, in the reality of histology, because we're dealing with dead or preserved organisms, they're not going to look quite the same in the context of their tectorial membrane. But otherwise, you can see some of these same general features. You have this scala vestibuli up here and the scala tympani down here. And one of the features I like to focus on the most is this thin membrane running across the top here and also in this one up here. And that is the vestibular membrane, or also known as the Reisner's membrane, as you can see here. And that vestibular membrane is very, very thin, so it's easy to pick out, actually, with your eye. It's this one very, very thin uh, line running across just above what is the organ of Corti down here. So now let's take a closer look at the organ of Corti. Now we're just going to zoom in on the same picture, and now you can see a couple clear features here. See that tectorial membrane, the vestibular membrane, and if you notice, above the vestibular membrane, there's a little bit more haze, a little dirtier. You can see it very easily over here. And down here, it's nice and clear. And the reason for that is that the fluid that's found between the vestibular membrane and the basilar membrane right here, this is called endolymph, and it's highly controlled. The concentration of ions needs to be perfect so that the depolarization events that occur at the hair cells can happen perfectly, or as perfectly as possible. Whereas this perilymph, which is what this is called and this fluid is called, that doesn't have to be controlled quite as tightly, so you'll see that in slides as just the more hazy section. So down here in the organ of Cordy, you'll have, you can try to pick out some of the hair cells. This is probably one right here. And Based on the cross-section, it only happened to have caught one perfectly, but there would be one there, another one there, and another one there. Let's see if we can make it even bigger. And then the inner hair cell is going to be somewhere right down in here, and in this particular slide you don't see it, so I wouldn't worry about picking out those individual hair cells. But really, just based on the ideal structure here, you can see always from in this slide the right from moving from right to left you're gonna see the outer hair cells somewhere you can kind of visualize where this tectorial membrane would land so the outer hair cells are gonna be found out here whereas the inner hair cells are on the steeper region of the organ of Corti and then as you zoom out sometimes you'll see some of the nervous tissue heading off towards the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve and that's pretty much it so remember endolymph versus perilymph Dictorial membrane, the organ of Cordy is the entire structure here, which is responsible for transduction of sound, and the cochlear nerve fibers you can see traveling outside towards the, medi to, towards the middle of the cochlea.